Hey guys, Alex Kahn here, and uh, today's movie review is Race to Witch Mountain 2009. And before I start, I do want to give a little disclaimer here. Um, I am reviewing Disney movies that I haven't seen yet. You know, I'm a huge Disney fan, but there's still a few Disney movies that for some reason I skipped, and now I'm going back to watch them right now. And I think it's important for me as a Disney fan, let's say I'm in line for Space Mountain, and someone strikes up a conversation about a Disney movie, if I don't know what they're talking about, they're going to think I'm, I'm worthless. So, 2009 live-action movie, uh, Race to Witch Mountain, starring The Rock. Now, immediately, you're going to hear Witch Mountain, and that's going to take you back to the 70s. Back in 1975, that's when the first uh, Witch Mountain movie came out. It was Escape to Witch Mountain, and then came Return to Witch Mountain, and then came Beyond Witch Mountain, and then in the late 90s, there was a remake of the first movie, also called Escape to Witch Mountain. So that takes us to 2009, where we had this movie called Race to Witch Mountain, and I don't know if this is a reboot or, or what, because the storyline is very similar to the, uh, to, to the previous uh, Witch Mountain movies. Um, just to give you a quick recap of what the 2009 plot is, basically there's these uh, two kids, they're from outer space, they uh, land on Earth, and they are looking for something. I'm not going to tell you what it is in case you haven't seen it yet. Um, but once they found what they were looking for, they need to get back to their spaceship, which they crashed, and the government has possession of it. Um, if they don't get back to their spaceship in time, this could lead to an invasion by their people to take over the planet Earth. And I'm not going to tell you why there's going to be an invasion. I'll let you figure, it out, figure that out for yourselves. And I'll let you figure out the rest of the plot for yourselves. I just want to give you my, my impressions of the movie. So yeah, as I said, I don't know if this is a, a reboot or what. Because again, the storyline is similar to the previous uh, Witch Mountain movies. Uh, but in this movie, these two kids, they are aliens, but their names are not Tia and Tony as it was previously in the, in the other movies. Uh, their names here are Sarah and Seth, I believe. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Um, and, and their roles are very similar. You know, they're these kids. They have these special powers. Um, but these kids, they do know they're from, from another planet. I think in the first movie, they did not know until later on. Um, now, I want to tell you what I think about this movie really fast. Um, the movie, it, it's, it's not a bad movie. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a particularly great movie, and it's not even a memorable movie. I think it's a pretty forgettable movie, and it's, it's a very standard uh, sci-fi sci -fi film. And I can't really think of too many uh, standout scenes in this movie. The only thing I can think of is when The Rock turns around like this... And uh, they've made many memes about that. But aside from that, I can't really think of any any uh, memorable scenes in this movie. Again, it's 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 competently made. Uh, it's just the storyline is really basic. But again, it's not a bad movie. It's just I didn't really care for it. I mean, I could definitely sit through it, and it's definitely you know a a decent way to pass the time. But I would not go out of my way to watch this movie again. Um, that's not to say that there were any bad performances. There were some really great performances, especially by the villain. His name is uh, Kiernan Hines, or I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Um, if you guys don't know who he is, he's this uh, British actor, and he plays the uh, he plays Julius Caesar in the HBO Rome series. He's a very fantastic actor, and he usually plays uh, characters who you don't know if they're good or bad. They're kind of there and not... Not quite the people you want to hang out with, basically. Um, but also in this movie, you have uh, one of the, the ladies from uh, Haunting of Hill House. I forgot her name already, sorry. And uh, the two kids are pretty famous, too. I don't remember the girl's name, but the, but the guy, uh, he plays the big uh, blonde from The Hunger Games. He's one of the, uh, the uh, district champions. I think his name is Alexander... Man, I'm really bad with names. I probably should, should have researched this, huh? Oh, well. But, uh, yeah, I, I finished the movie, and it has a happy ending. 
well, I, I guess it depends on, on who you are, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, it's just, there just wasn't anything particularly great about this movie. And I can see why a lot of people don't rate this movie really highly. I, I wouldn't give this movie a 4 out of 10. I think that's pretty low. I would, I would probably give this movie like a, maybe like a 5 out of 10 or a 6 out of 10. But I would not go any higher than that. It's just because this movie is so simple. And so forgettable that I, I couldn't rate it any higher than than a 6 out of 10. But anyways, what did you guys think of this movie? Um, and I myself, I would I would definitely recommend the first the first Witch Mountain movie made in 1975, Escape to Witch Mountain, because there was a better buildup of, of the two kids. Whereas in this movie, the two kids just kind of appear and you already know that they're aliens. It just kind of, I mean, it's a great way to kick off, you know, a good action movie that doesn't want to spend too much time developing a plot. Um, but I, I kind of like, you know, a more of a slower pace and a better character development. But uh, let's end this video. Hope you enjoyed it.